How you doing? This is Yaakov here with a beautiful idea. In memory of this beautiful idea, may everybody get closer to God and uh, realize all the sacrifices that we're making are not just a sacrifice that's in vain. We in the portion of Torah portion. Um, I apologize. It was two weeks ago, <laughs> but I'm gonna connect it to this week as well, um, which is which was Parshas, par, the portion of Vaera, which is where Abraham was willing to go, quote unquote, sacrifice his son at the behest of God, and he's willing to go through the process, and he's willing to put his mind aside. We know, we know Abraham was vehemently against sacrificing children or anyone for the sake of God. Just, you don't sacrifice somebody else uh, for God. God commanded him. This was his test to do so, to go through the motions, so to speak, to see what his will, where his will lies. And it was very well known uh, through the sages that, uh, that this was Abraham's tenth and final test that he had. So you can imagine it's a very, very extreme, serious test to be his final test, be his final main test, I should, we should say, final 10th main test. So if you, he goes through the, everything, he does exactly what he's supposed to do. And God, and God calls out and he doesn't, he doesn't permit him to kill him. And he even says, now that I know that you respect me, now that I know that, you're, that, you, that you fear me, that I'm somebody that you know that I that I know that I'm I'm the main thing in your eyes that you're willing to go against even your own self, to to do my will, but I was never in, it was never God's intention to help him to let him go through with it at all whatsoever. And if you take a look at the name of this event in in Ju in, uh, in Jewish texts in the Siddur, and uh, if you ask any anybody what it's called. This whole test is not called the binding of uh, the uh, test of Abraham. This is called the binding of Yitzchak, actually. It's called in the name of Yitzchak, even though this is a which is Isaac, even though this is Abraham's tenth and final test, one of his hardest tests. It's it's called in the name of I Isaac. And one of the reasons is that. In a very obvious way, Abraham was so old, and Isaac, literally, he was in his early thirties. He was so old; he's about yeah. Um, uh, Abraham was about a hundred years older than Isaac, and Isaac, being in his early thirties, could have easily kicked over Abraham. In uh, what do you call it? Uh, Regarding the fact that uh, that that he maybe thought is that if if his if he th could have thought that his dad was crazy like God didn't tell you to do this isn't it? he didn't say that he didn't he didn't do that instead he completely went with whatever his father said he had as we know it's called emunas chachamim faith in the sages faith in the sage faith faith in his father and his father's connection with God and that God never failed his father until then and he wouldn't and he wouldn't start now. And we see the the what a what a child is willing to go through to uh, to li not only listen to their father but he's his father is a righteous person the whole generation and uh, recognizing how great his father is he doesn't just give up on him which is such an amazing amazing thing and therefore it's called in his name the binding of Yitzchak of, of Isaac even though it's Abraham's last test and in this week's portion that we just read uh, fast forwarding to two weeks speaks about it. These are the generations of Abraham. Abraham gave birth to to Isaac. And it's such a such an amo amazing thing. We see how these ideas connect together so well that you could just say these are the generations of Abraham, a Isaac. Isaac is a gen Isaac, Isaac is a generation of uh, Isaac is Yitzchak is the you know the son, the main son of Abraham, the one who the Jewish people will come from. 
that will make God's name known throughout the world in a positive way. So, so it's an interesting um, language that the, the Torah chose to use, that, that these are the generations of Abraham. Abraham gave birth to, to Isaac. The fact is that the fact is that the exactly where Abraham left off, his 10th final test, we can really say, to, to be honest with you, in the Torah is at the beginning of, of Isaac, showing us how important, how holy, how great Isaac really was, that he was willing, on Abraham's final test, at such a young age, Isaac showed such huge, tremendous self-sacrifice. Even in the Torah, Abraham wasn't even technically spoken about openly um, until he was about 75 years old. So Isaac, early 30s, what a tremendous, tremendous lesson that we learn and how a son is willing to not only listen to his father, but willing to submit to the righteous person of the generation and listen to what he's saying and believe and willing to sacrifice himself for the right reasons, for, for a good cause, to listen to God. And this was the meat of the character trait of, of Isaac, of Givura, that he was willing to overcome his personal inclination to listen to God's, to the will of God. And how many times in our life it, it becomes very difficult to, to, to want sometimes even and to, and to do the will of God, whatever we know the will of God to be, because it's not convenient, because it's not so, it may not be looking for, maybe not what we thought it was. And in the end of the day, when we do listen, it turns out to be something way beyond. When when a righteous person says, go pray to God for 10, 15 minutes, in your own words, go pray to God for an hour, go pray to God for, start out minutes. You're like, I don't really think it's going to do so much. I don't really see the purpose of it. You know, open up the Bible, open up a regular, a regular Bible, open up and just start start reading for 10, 10 minutes a day. I don't really think it's going to do so much. At first, it may not seem like it's going to do so much. At first, it seems like I could do so much more with my time. I, you know, take $10 that you have a week to give it to somebody who you feel like really needs it on the street or that you that you know is really struggling and they're doing their best. I don't know. Really, I could do so much more with that $10 a week. After a month, I had 40 bucks. I could have do, done so much more. There's so much sacrifice a person thinks that they could do with that time, with that money, with that energy, or take take half an hour out of each week to go help somebody, to do a kindness. I don't know if I could do that so heavy, to go out of your way, to do the will of God, to recognize that these are the things that really God's looking for. Not are you giving a trillion dollars or a billion dollars. If he would want you to give a, a trillion billion dollars, he would have given you that kind of money and he would give you that test. But he doesn't give us that test. What he gives us is the regular things that go unnoticed. You hear about this guy, this billionaire who gives a million dollars. So we think it's so special. And of this guy who gives so much, so many hours of his time. He has a lot of money. He is giving so much of his time. I think it's so special. Like, no, I need to work from 9 to 5. And it's very difficult for me to sacrifice my time and everything to pray to God or to whatever it is. No, God's like, I'm coming on your place, on your level. Start with five, ten minutes. Start praying to me in your own words. Start start giving five, ten dollars to people who you see, really see, genuinely need it. Who are really, really putting in their effort to trying to do their best or who want to and who don't know or, or to talk with people or to help people in the way that you can only. And it's not in vain. It's never in vain. And the last piece I want to share with everybody about sacrifice, a real sacrifice is never in vain, meaning a real sacrifice has real fruit. If it's a sacrifice that's in vain, so I understand why people might feel like they're, you know, there's something wrong with it, I don't know, I don't know. But if you're sure, and if, and, and if you're following, if you're really following good advice, and you prayed on it, and you asked Hashem to guide you from to where you're supposed to go, 
with the advice and with even the feelings that you have. Instead of you want to double check to make sure that what you're going to do is the right thing, fine. But still, there's at the end of the day, there's an aspect of trusting what's in front of you and doing the best that you can and going forward and taking that leap and putting in that time, 5, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, the, the $10, $15, the time, the energy to do the kindnesses that you're going to do. And in the end of the day, you're going to see after the week, after the month, after the year, after the one time you did it, how much it's going to change your life. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Sometimes it's not like one time will make it the deciding factor. But inside, when you choose to do that good thing, when you choose to speak to God, when you choose to do the kindness, when you choose to give of yourself, of your money, whatever you have, you're showing you're willing to sacrifice something dear to you, that's when you're going to be drawn close to God. That's when you're going to feel that closeness, just like Isaac, just like Abraham, willing to sacrifice the thing that's closest to you. And it does. And you don't have to start with the biggest thing. Start with the smallest things in the world. And then you show God that you are a vessel. You're willing to open yourself up to be a vessel, to be able to serve God. And God gives you a, a, a expands your vessel and makes it a bigger, a bigger, bigger vessel to be able to receive more, to give more, to do the right thing. And then you'll see all the plans that God had for you were way bigger than what you thought. But just start with one, because God is one. Start with one thing. Start with, start with something small and enjoy your life and see your life expand to things, to to places and and your ideas and your mind and everything to be bigger than what you thought it could be. Don't give up on yourself. Don't think of yourself as small. You're a creation of God. You're way bigger. You're a soul. You're not your body. And your job of your body is to serve the soul. And when it when when it serves the soul, sometimes it fights the soul sometimes because it's not used to it all the time. Especially when you don't grow up with with the soul, the knowing that you have a soul and that it's the most important thing. So sometimes the body at first fights to give the money to the person that you want to give it to that you it looks like good to give it to. Or to, to put in five, take time, 10 minutes away from your phone to go speak to God in your own words, words to say psalms, to go do a kindness. Sometimes it hurts a little bit at first because it's like you feel like you're giving of yourself. But the whole idea is that that giving of yourself, that sacrifice is worth everything to you because you're going to see in the end how you will open up, your soul will expand within your body, that your body will become the vessel that you've been always longing for. You hear stories about all these wretched people. It's about, all these stories are about all the different things, all the places that you can be. And these stories are not just stories. It's a lesson for all of us to take to heart, to recognize that it's referring to us and it's where we can be. And if you just leave it as a story, so it's a story. But if you want to take it to heart and if you want it to make it real for yourself, you're going to realize it's not just a story. It's about you. It's about me. And on my level, I need to do it. And on your level, you're going to see how beneficial it is. You're going to want to do it. You're going to realize it's a part of your life to make the sacrifice what it looks like a sacrifice. And in the end of the day, you're going to see not only is it worth it, in the end of the day, it was just an illusion. The sacrifice was an illusion. You would have sacrificed, you should have, you would have, re you realized you would have sacrificed way more if you would know the gold, the the real precious diamonds and 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 and, and mindset and freedom that you would feel from doing good, from all the good that God wants us to do in this world, you'll you'll feel such great freedom that you will you would realize you would never want to question what what He's asking of you, but instead, instead of starting so big, instead of thinking, instead of knowing that right now, it's very difficult to always know what's going to happen at the end of the road. But we can do start small, start be reasonable with yourself. 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, start talking to God. Do, doing it 5, 10 minutes, 20 minutes of your time, doing kindness a week. Um, uh, 10, 5, 10, 20 dollars, whatever you can. Person, every week or every month, whatever you can do. So that you can see, so that, everybody, so that you can see exactly, not only and feel that gratification of doing that kindness, but recognize that that, that that feeling that you're feel is the expansion of your soul within your body, that your body, as much as it's fighting you, as much as it, it, it's thinking about your own needs only and your own desires only, 
your body more than anything actually wants to feel the delight of the soul and it, and when you start to get used to it you start to to tune yourself to tune yourself to tune in to what your soul wants from you which is what God is calling from your soul God is calling giving you so, giving you um advice to your soul but the body sometimes is in the way so we learn to sacrifice little by little by little we start to hearing the messages of God and you st and I don't mean like in a crazy way you start to hear get tuned in to what God wants from you you start to see your life even in a regular day-to-day -day life what God is signaling you in life in the world what to do the same news you heard the same people that you've been speaking to are saying things differently now how is that possible because now you're open to God which is in every situation when you're willing to make that sacrifice you'll see it was never a sacrifice it was all for your benefit have a great day enjoy and uh, may God bless you to be able to make the things that seem like a sacrifice uh, a part of your life. And may you see that it was never a sacrifice. See that it was always a benefit to you, your family, yourself, the whole world. And may you everything that you have in your whole life expand. The ruchnius of the gashmios in spirituality and physicality and in the best way possible in this world and in the next. Have a great, amazing day. Bye.